to you, Michael Queen, author, uh, paranormal researcher, and historian. Michael. First of all, I would like to, uh, some of you may have noticed my little friend here on the poster. Uh, I would like to introduce him, but he doesn't actually have a name. Uh, so I'd like, I'd like your help with that. If somebody could suggest a name for our friend here, I'd appreciate it. Anybody? Bob. Um, uh, <laughs> yes? What did you say? Reaper? Well, I guess that's fitting. How about Bob the Reaper? We'll call him Bob the Reaper. <laughs> so this is our friend Bob the Reaper. Uh, I also wanted to plug tonight I couldn't really have done this with, so why don't we get started? Uh, this is one of the most famous of Rockford's legends. This is a haunted house, as you can see there on North First Street, uh, a little ways from the library here. Uh, this story is based on a real person, a person who actually lived in this house for a very long time, and someone who was well known to the community. Uh, her name was Emma Pauline Jones. She was an immigrant from Norway. Uh, she lived at this home, which was built in 1856 from the 1920s into the 1950s. Uh, she lived there for most of this time with her husband, Frank. And he owned a transport company. And so he was often away on business. So uh, this lady would spend most of her time alone in this house with her three dogs, including two Dalmatians, Moxie and Jane. Now, after her husband died in 1941, uh, Emma was left pretty much alone in this house, except for her three beloved dogs. And as, uh, as nature tends to do, those dogs grew old and died. And so Emma was then left alone in this house. And this is uh, a very massive house, if you can tell. It has very large open rooms. It's very spacious. Uh, it's much too much for just one person. And slowly but surely, uh, she began to descend into loneliness and dementia. Uh, she spent her twilight years sitting in the rocking chair waiting for loved ones who would never return. As storytellers say that she became convinced that her husband and her beloved dogs had not passed on, but they actually were on a business trip and that any day now they would come back. So, she waited up in one of the rooms in the top of the house, overlooking the Rock River, uh, waiting for them to, to come back. And of course, they never did. Uh, Emma finally uh, sold her home when relatives convinced her that she could no longer uh, afford to live there, both physically and uh, monetarily. And she moved in with this relative where she died in 1964. Uh, but some people say that she returned to this home that she, uh, that she loved for so long. Now, there are a number of different stories from the various uh, people who occupied this house after her to sort of substantiate the ghost story. Um, the earliest one is of a, a realtor who was showing the house, and he walked down into the basement uh, to show the basement, and he couldn't find the light switch. So he lit a match, and the first match got blown out by the wind. And so he lit a second match. And this match he dropped, because he was startled by what he saw. In the shadows, he thought he saw a person standing there in the basement with him. And so this realtor didn't uh, inform his potential clients of this, because he wanted to sell the house. And so, eventually, a young couple bought the house, and they uh, claimed that strange things would, would happen while they, while they were there. Just simple, mundane things. Uh, you know, people uh, hear footsteps and, and that kind of thing. One of the things they said was that they could hear someone tapping on their, their headboard at night. Kind of like that. Uh, but these things weren't really enough to startle this young couple. They'd invested a lot of money in this house, so they wanted to stay there 
as long as they could. That was a beautiful little home. Well, the straw that broke the camel's back was one night, they were getting ready for bed. Uh, they were coming downstairs in their living room to check and see if all the doors were locked. And suddenly, uh, an elderly woman appeared out of nowhere and demanded to know what they were doing in her house. And of course, they were completely startled by this, uh, especially when this woman disappeared. And suffice to say, uh, this young couple then sold the house and moved elsewhere. The next resident was a uh, bachelor, an older gentleman whose wife had died. And he decided to move into this, this stately old home. And uh, he too began to hear uh, certain strange noises. Uh, he heard what sounded like claws tapping on the floor, like would, you know, if a dog were to be walking around. And he also, again, heard strange tapping on his bed, uh, bed post. Kind of like that. The, the tipping point for him was when he was awoken uh, by a phone call on his birthday, and he answered the phone, and on the other end was an older lady who asked him uh, if she was dead. And she kept asking him over and over again, am I dead, am I dead? Uh, this spooked him considerably, obviously, and he uh, moved out very soon after that. Now, a number of businesses uh, moved into this home after that. Um, there were several of them. One of them was a, an architectural uh, firm. And one of the employees who worked there was a secretary who seemed to be rather sensitive to these things. And one day, um, she had made a, a cheesecake for, you know, a, a luncheon or something like that for her company. She went to go get a knife to cut the cheesecake, and when she turned around, the cheesecake had already been cut. Now we know that uh, one of Emma's favorite foods to bake was cheesecake. Now the same employee, later on, uh, descended the stairs to the attic to, to get some files or something. And she said that uh, suddenly the, the room was no longer the storage room. Suddenly the room uh, was transformed. You know, it had uh, a dresser in there, it had all this old furniture, uh, and what looked like an old bed. And she was very shaken up by this. So she raced down the stairs, but not before, out of the corner of her eye, uh, she thought she caught a glimpse of something. So she turned around, and standing there on the stairs was the ghost of this old woman. Uh, now, there, there have been a six, you know, successive businesses in this residence, as I've said. Uh, I'm not sure who occupies it today, but as far as I understand, the uh, ghostly manifestations of Emma Jones have kind of tapered off over the years. Uh, one of the reasons for this might be because the last business who had this home actually accepted the ghost and they found a, a painting of an older woman behind some bookshelves and they thought, oh this must be a painting of, of Emma and so they hung it prominently on the wall and at their Halloween party every year they also set a place for Emma in case her ghost wanted to show up and join them. It never did. 